I would like to cover a couple of science research topics. First, phase transitions of pluronic PAD5 solutions. Then the structure of STS mice cells. Then polymer co-solvation, co non solvations uh, Then final points. Phase transition of pluronic PAD5. What are pluronics? They are tri-block copolymers. In this case, polypropylene oxide, which is kind of hydrophobic when you heat up. Polyethylene oxide, which is hydrophilic likes water. PEO is the simplest water soluble polymer, so ethylene group in an oxygen. PPO is a bulkier uh, hydrophobic group, which uh, low temperature they're well dissolved then when you heat up the PPO becomes really hydrophobic and forms micelles. So show you data for half a percent PAD5 nutrated water right off. Low temperature you get 1 over Q to the 5 third that's fully swollen coils we call them unimers. You heat up at uh, 50 degrees, you get spherical micelles. Look at the clues 1 over Q to the 0, 1 over Q4. These are, this is a smooth surface, you know, well compact particles. Then you heat up 70 degrees, you get a 1 over Q1, 1 over Q4. These are cylindrical particles, cylindrical micelles. You heat up further 90 degrees, you get 1 over Q square and 1 over Q4. These are lamellar my cells. So you get uh, phase transitions just by changing temperature. So the phase diagram can be constructed just by looking at the intensity at low Q versus temperature. You get these plateaus, spherical, enemies, spherical, my cylindrical, my cells, and so on. Actually, this was for one volume fraction. We changed the volume fraction. Things changed slightly. So you get the Phase diagram, temperature versus volume fraction. Let's see a case of a, a model, core shell, spherical particle for these micelles. We, we know that PPO is inside, PO is outside, but there's water outside as well. So uh, the model is available, core shell, spherical particles. These are called spherical vessel function, bunch of size and cosines and so on, but you don't have to worry too much about what's under the hood. Uh, so when does the fit, you get not only the size of the core and size of the, the, the shell, but you also get the scattering density of the core, the shell, and the solvent, which is fixed D2O. So core shell spherical particles, one can also Go one step further and uh, work out the material balance equation. You don't have to worry about these equations. All I want to say is you can get more from fit results, more than the size of scattering and density. If you do a material balance equation, what you can get is how many particles are in the core, like there. 3000 PPO monomers, about 700 PO monomers. Not many PO monomers inside the core, but it was a surprise to us. There are any. PO is hydrophilic, but a few of them end up being in the core as well. Then each time you have PO, you need to hydrate them a little bit. There are a few water molecules inside the core as well. In the shell, there are about 3,000 PO monomers, and each one is hydrated a factor of 10 water molecules per PO monomer. Structure of STS micelles is second topic. Uh, surfactants are formed of hydrophilic head, it likes water, hydrophobic tail, does it like water. Uh, micelles are formed with enough surfactant aggregates above what is called critical micelle concentration. So in other words, you have water, start adding some surfactant like STS. A certain STS fraction, micelles form. 
beyond that, some of the most of the STS goes to form the bicell, but a certain small fraction remains dissolved. Remains dissolved at the CMC fraction, CMC concentration. So STS surfactants from my cells in water, dilute water, and this is a sun spectrum, for example, for these different volume fractions fixed temperature. So you see that when you increase the volume fraction of STS, the interparticle peak increases and moves to the right. In other words, most like uh, the interdistance becomes smaller and smaller because there are more and more micelles. So one can get a hint here. There is a peak and there is a shoulder. So in other words, there are two sizes involved. These are spheres with two sides, they are ellipsoids, and we have models for ellipsoidal uh, particle and so on. So, let's look at the case of 5% STS at uh, uh, 49 degrees C. So you get the peak here, structure factor, you get a shoulder here, um, ellipsoidal, and you get a low Q, uh, almost like background due to what is called clustering. Okay, so uh, as far as the model, we use what is called the power law at low Q, and the ellipsoidal micelles at high Q, uh, and then turn the crank. This is the model fit in blue, and the science data in red is pretty good. So this is, let's look at uh, some of the results. Can estimate ellipsoid volume, which becomes smaller as you increase temperature. It's because hydrogen bonding is softening, but the volume increases as you increase the volume fraction. So we have the volume of these STS micelles in details for every concentration, every temperature. More fit results. Here we added some salt. We found that. Uh, Ellipsoidal particles have a minor radius and a major radius. We found that the minor radius doesn't change much, but the major radius does. These are called, these ellipsoids are just like, a, not like a football, but like a pancake. And when we add uh, salt, it's just like the pancake is getting wider, but the thickness is not changing much. Material balance equations, one can also play the game here as well. And we found that there is no D2 inside the micelles. And we found that the STS uh, fraction in the micelles is around 70 to 80 percent. With the remaining uh, STS staying dissolved in water. Phase diagram, this is for 20% STS, 50% so on, it has been worked out using thermal analysis and you get all of these uh, phases, very rich phase diagram, spherical micelles here, uh, ellipsoidal really, and then you get hexagonal phases and so on. The third project is polymer co-salvation and co salvation What do I mean? I mean, if you have a polymer, and you use mixed solvents, two solvents instead of one. Does the polymer dissolve better in two solvents or worse? Or general thermodynamics of mixing for polymers. Polymers tend to phase separate either upon heating, it's called lower critical solution temperature, or upon cooling, it's called upper critical solution temperature. So, uh, polymer phase uh, transitions in the case where lower critical solution temperature, the intensity tends to increase as you raise the temperature. In other words, you're going closer to a two phase region, the intensity increases. CST. Case of UCST, 
So it's the opposite. Intensity decreases as you go up in temperature. Going away from the phase boundary, the intensity decreases. So in other words, the intensity gives us an idea of composition fluctuation. If you're getting close to a phase boundary, intensity increases. You're getting away, the intensity decreases. Uh, so for PO, for example, in water, we know it's LCST. PO in ethanol, it's UCST. Very low temperature crystallizes, but you, when you heat up, it's amorphous, and you can figure out the upper critical spinol temperature and so on. So PO in water, when you heat up, the intensity goes up, LCST. In ethanol water mixtures, in pure ethanol, when you heat up, the intensity goes down. But in pure water, when you heat up, the intensity goes up. So LCST, UCST, uh, and we figure out the phase diagram precisely. You start adding more and more water, so in pure ethanol, UCST, phase boundary is here. When you add more and more water, it becomes LCST, and in between, we discovered a perfectly mixed region, window here, where there, there are no composition fluctuations whatsoever. Going to very high temperature and low temperature, perfectly mixed. So that's a core solvation. Uh, let's talk about core non solvation. Core solvation, most water soluble polymers behave that way, but there is one notable exception. That's a co solvation here. The notable exception is called NIPAM. It's a polymer that does the opposite. When you in pure water, you see in pure ethanol is UCST, in pure water is LCST. But in between, you don't get a perfectly mixed region, but completely phase separated region. So in this case, NIPAM. In pure ethanol, you heat up and the intensity goes down. In pure water, you heat up and the intensity goes up. So, uh, if you plot the inverse solvation intensity, inverse intensity versus inverse temperature, you get really the UCST and the LCST regions very precisely, which allows us to build up the phase diagram. Okay? So the results, most polymers dissolve better in mixed solvents. NAPAM is the only known polymer to obey a cool non solvation rule. PO is characterized by a perfect solvation window, 10% NAPAM non solvation window. Sense is a valuable thermodynamic probe to study phase transitions as well as nanostructures. Final points upgrade and vSense, old guide hall. The new guide hall, the old 10 meter sands, it's a workhorse, the 230 meter sands, NG7, NG3, which becoming NGB, and uh, the, the V sands, which will be on NG3. The U sands is inside the confinement building using thermal instruments. Uh, as far as SANS U SANS, here I'm showing you a SANS spectrum on PO in ethanol. This is a U SANS, and then the V SANS will overlap between the two. Final words the SANS program at NIST involves some 200 experiments per year, resulting in something like 15 theses, 80 publications. You know, it's Steve Klein, Derek Hall, Mike Warren, and Hu Chang. And check out this website has a lot of interesting stuff in it, including uh, tutorial and lots of uh, interesting references and so on. Thank you.